Well, if you think about the last two years, I'd say we've had one dominant headline across much of North Dakota, really, and that'd have to be grasshoppers. Uh, grasshoppers, grasshoppers, grasshoppers. That's really been the focal point, especially if you live really from Highway 83 to the west. Uh, the last couple of years, that has been the number one phone call I've really taken uh, is grasshopper issues. Uh, they're really been a big deal. Uh, they can lead to some defoliation, especially early on in the growing season. As we get to this time of year, you know, we're having a later harvest, especially with many of our small grains. What we're seeing is some of these adult grasshoppers can even result in clipping or cutting of the top of the heads to some of those small grains. So really, they're impactful all year long and they can have a yield impact all year long as a result of that. One of the big questions I've been getting over this last year is, you know, we've had a little bit more moisture this year and doesn't usually moisture result in death of grasshoppers? Well, the simple answer to that is no. It's actually a little bit more complicated. When you think about grasshoppers as a whole and, you know, a lot of other insects, drought tends to allow populations to explode. Uh, one, crops become more stressed out. That makes plants a little bit more vulnerable uh, to insects like that of grasshoppers. Two, if you think about a normal growing season that has a little bit of moisture, that helps promote disease, uh, not just in crops, but in insect populations as well. When you have a dry year like we saw in 2021, you really lose the impact of that disease in grasshopper populations. So as a result, that's one of those promotions of reduction in grasshopper populations that we really lost these last two years. So with that being said, Moisture in 2022, we didn't really see impact or rebuilding of that uh, disease impact. The main reason was the little bit of moisture we did get to interact with evaporated fairly quickly. The sun would come out in a pretty quick period of time to help dry that back out. So we continue to see this explosion of grasshopper building. If I think about Western North Dakota as a whole, there are really three different areas that I would say not just had high populations, but maybe even severe populations. Uh, that would, of course, be southeast of Minot, looking through the Sawyer and Logan areas, uh, looking near uh, southwest Ward County, Ryder, McCody, and then pretty a large area, really, from Grenora, North Dakota, down to about Wofford City. Uh, populations were very impactful. Some growers really resulted in three, four, maybe even five chemical applications at those field sites as economic threshold seem to return very rapidly. One of the big questions I've been getting is, what can we do to tackle this for next year? Can I go spray my fields or grass areas right now to control them? The answer is, you could do that, but you may not get the response that you want, really because populations are so high and they're so mobile, they really reinfest an area in a fairly short period of time. So the, my suggestion to you right now is, take note of where the big populations are right now and also take note of where your late maturing crops are. Sunflowers are a good example of that, soybean, corn, uh, just to name a few. As we are removing the early maturing crops from the field through harvest, those grasshoppers are moving to those later maturing crops and becoming more impactful. Those will become more sites where more egg laying can take place looking to next year. What populations will look like next year will have a little bit of a bearing on what our winter looks like. If we could have a couple weeks of bitter cold before the snow, that may actually hurt populations going into the early season next year. However, any snow that falls will serve as a thermal blanket protecting some of those populations. So as we get to the early spring next year, uh, border chemical control may be needed in some areas, especially if economic threshold is met. So what does 2023 hold for us? I guess time will tell along with the weather conditions.